Hi everybody and welcome to this episode of the I Founded podcast. Um, today we are hugely pleased to be joined by a current student of the university who is undertaking a really brave venture. Um, so I'll let you introduce yourself, Folu. Yeah, um, hello, my name is Folu. I am in my final year at Cambridge um, studying uh, sociology and I've also um, in the meantime whilst studying here I founded um, my social enterprise Ramos Careers which is a well it seeks to provide like interactive online um, tools and resources to help students navigate the their career journeys. So we're really obviously this is a topic of great interest for me as a careers <laughs> advisor but also I think really super interesting for you to the fact that you're from a social sciences background looking at a venture and also to look at kind of how that journey has been with you whilst you've been been studying. Um, so for, we've got six questions to go through. So we're going to work through those and um, hopefully we will also have a few extra questions that come up. So first question is, can you please tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming a founder so far? Yeah, um, well, I guess it all started with, um, well, the whole reason why I created Vamos was because it's meant to be a platform for students by students. So I created it um, in my second year and it was inspired by my experiences when I was applying to um, internships um, at the end of my first year of university and also just generally trying to navigate the career world because I started out at uni thinking that I wanted, I really, really wanted to go into like public sector international development um, because I thought that was like the only way I could effectively help people in my work. I I assume that corporate careers in that area is just about like numbers and um, the bottom line and like things that aren't really people centered. And it was through my own journey of um, doing an internship at the civil service, like oh, an insight week in my first year that made me realize that actually um, what I'm more interested in is using um, my innovation skills to in a way that helps people. And that's what led me to human resources within the finance sector in a weird way. And like, it was that whole journey that like very non-linear journey that made me, and like, as well as like applying to so many different internships and trying to organize myself and juggle all my different priorities as a student and extracurricular activities that made me think that I can't really think of any apps that really help students um, in all the stages before they even apply and whilst they apply to opportunities. So I wanted to create a solution that really puts students first and provides tools that aid them along every step of their career journey. And um, that's what, and so it was through using my own experiences that I started to research, okay, how could I turn this into an actual product? And um, yeah, that's why I created Vamos Careers. Great. And it's really interesting about your own lived experiences and you being a student, because some of the other founders we've interviewed on this journey, even if they were kind of 10 or even 20 years out from graduation, were still using their lived experiences. So mm. that's, you know, as a foundation to start a business. And I think that that kind of perspective of, you know, thinking about what you're going through yourself and how you'd like to make that process easier and how you could be representative of your community is important isn't it mm -hmm. yeah it's really important <laughs> yeah okay so so you've given us a little bit of an overview but um how would you summarize vamos careers and the work it hopes to do in around three words yeah so i've been thinking about those three words and i've come up with um exploration preparation and action um, and I'd like to expand on that. Like, I've been trying to think of, well, since the whole point of Amos is to provide a resource that helps, or a platform that helps students throughout their entire career journey, not just at, like, I guess the final stage of applying to jobs and finding vacancies. And so I, through these three words of exploration, um, well, the first stage of exploration is about helping students understand what are the different career options that exist out there? And mm -hmm. so um, I want to create like uh, one aspect of the app will hopefully be to provide different um, insights into the different industries and pathways and to help students really understand that um, thing, like the career world isn't as like clear cut or pigeonholed as like we might traditionally think. Um, and so first they need to explore these different areas. And then once they do that, then they can start to prepare and narrow down which um, career pathways they want to focus on but the whole time still maintaining an open mind about 
um, having a backup plan, which is obviously really important in this pandemic <laughs> where um, things are so um, just uncertain, unpredictable. And then um, the third stage of taking action is like helping students with um, like just develop themselves and develop the skills that are sought after in the particular career pathways that they're pursuing and um, helping them to um, see the value of like extracurricular activities and even things like leadership skills, entrepreneurship and like professional development opportunities that help them to really stand out um, so that they can um, take action in a way that's strategic and very intentional um, because I know how painful it can be to put so much energy mm. into an application and um, but like I really want them to once they get to that stage of applying like for them to know why they're a right fit and um, also why they're a right fit at that particular employer as well. So um, yeah, hopefully through like these three different stages, I'm hoping that um, students feel more confident and um, more like better informed in their career journey. Yeah, and really key that I think what you said there, which is really inspiring is about utilizing all your skills and that all of your skills, entrepreneurial, creativity, innovative, that they're all valued. And it's not just those on the surface, which, you know, like, mathematical ability or writing mm -hmm. ability um, that, that are valued. So I think that's really key. And I think breaking it down into those three areas gives people that kind of really digestible way of thinking about their career planning. Um, and that it can be time consuming to and, and frustrating to apply for things that you're not sure you're quite right for. So I think that's really mm -hmm. key. So when did you So you've used your own experiences, you've, you've spoken to your student community. Where did you start by turning a small idea or, you know, something you just thought, hey, I think I could help this in your second year um, into something that's now becoming a bit more of a functional organisation? Yeah, like, um, well, the first thing that I did was just like reach out to people who I thought could like provide like interesting insights and advice. Um, so like I first reached out to this um, person who he spoke at an insight event that I went to um, because he has like he's got a background in tech. He works for Google and like did lots of really, and he has now founded an organization that actually helps with getting um, diverse students into like the tech industry. So I felt like that's quite like the area that he functioned in and like his own entrepreneurial experience would, would help me with like just turning it from an idea into an actual into an actual like viable business and so then yeah I, I told him like the idea that I had and he was very very like blunt and critical with it and was asking lots of questions about okay but how are you going to do um like how will this be viable or how will it generate revenue um how is this different how is this unique um and so like that really helped me to like refine it and then after reaching out to him I then um uh, talk to other students um, and I actually got some of my friends on board with it and we actually together applied to um, a few different like student entrepreneurship competitions mm. which um, just the actual I what was really helpful which I didn't realize would be helpful because often when you apply to these competitions you just want to like win um, mm. or come first and get the grant money but what helped the most really was the actual process of applying to it and like when you first fill in the application form you have to ask these questions like there was on um, McKinsey Venture Academy which um even though we weren't like shortlisted for the next stage it they the application questions that you have to fill out there are so many of them asking so many different questions that like in the process of preparing the answer for it you're actually turning it from an idea into an actual business like you don't actually mm. realize that once you've filled out these questions you actually have something that is basically a business plan so that really really helped um applying to those unfortunately with the second with the other um competition we, we applied to downing enterprise we actually made it to the final round which is this was a cambridge um competition at downing college because yeah. one of my friends um was a goes to downing so um we were eligible to apply and so then um yeah we applied and we got shortlisted and they provided us with a mentor um from their like alumni network who um works closely with us with like preparing to pitch to like their board of investors so we actually like pitched um even though we weren't selected for investment like that really really helped with um refining the idea and like mm. getting that one-on-one -on -one mentorship um and meeting and we also got like pitch training as well so like that um really really helped with turning it from an idea into an actual like business plan or business model 
I think that's so insightful what you've just said there, which is sometimes the pro it's not always about the success, but the learning process. And mm -hmm. that actually what you're hitting all the time is the opportunity to validate your idea, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. And the the other key thing you've talked about there is the people that can help you along the way. Um, is so important because the questions that you're getting asked all the time can be really can feel a bit interrogative I expect because it's something yes. you're quite passionate about and you think yep. oh hang on but actually once you've kind of recovered from that it's <laughs> it can be really important to reflect on that process so I think that's really interesting what you've talked about there is in that process um, and that actually that's the same for uh, there's a good approach to have to applications or even job interviews you've had where Sometimes it can feel like rejection, but if you can take them as learning processes, is that's really key. Um, so you pulled on the, um, there's other competitions at Cambridge which can be helpful, but that process is good. Have you, um, have you then gone to apply to any other awards or any, anything else to kind of help fund the business? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, it's funny that you ask that because, um, well, like late, so the first round of things that we applied for as a team that was like around January 2020 and so then it, it took a while after I took a short break to focus on my studies and like well the pandemic hit and like that mm. just like made everything um go a bit like just crazy basically but then um so that was around um March that I took a break for like a month or so and then um I then came across this um online incubator program called Bridge for Billions, which um, they they created a program specifically for social entrepreneurs in their early stages called The Leap, which helps you go from like early stage to like um, actually have like a, like it's, the platform's really cool. They actually, um, it's, it's, it's a really unique program where um, if you get accepted onto it, you get, you go through like 14 days of mentor matching where, um, the, their network of mentors reach out to you and you like have like an initial like chat with them and then you decide which of the mentors um you'd really like to have as your own mentor throughout the program um it's over three months and then um once you have your mentor you work together on this online platform that they've that the incubators created to fill out these interactive questions that are based in like on various like um like entrepreneurship theories like lean startup methodologies and disciplined entrepreneurship and you fill out all of those and then um at the end of it you actually have this detailed business plan um at the end of the three months as well as and your mentor helps to like keep you accountable and give you feedback mm -hmm. and that really helped um so that was from like that was from like um like july to september to the end of september that i did that and then um so yeah, that really helped with ref like, with like revamping the idea um, and refining it. So that then, when I applied to um, the Young Innovators Award by Innovate UK and the Knowledge Transfer Network in October, um, which is um, a one year um, program, it's also like an award, but it's actually an entrepreneurial program for um, a selected cohort of young entrepreneurs between the ages of eighteen to, I believe is it 18 to 25 or 18 to 30 but it's like it's specifically for young people who have a business idea or a running business and um you get one-on-one -on -one support a five thousand pound grant and a living allowance um to focus on um developing your business idea and you also get um lots of different opportunities to promote it as they work with like a press pr agency to reach out to different newspapers and things to promote mm. the idea and so um yeah I got accepted onto that um which was really 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 great um really validated um Ramos and has really helped because now I'm able to work with a developer on the app and to actually um because I was planning on seeing if I could de develop the app myself using no code technology as someone from a non-tech background but now mm. I'm able to work with developers and also have one-on-one -on -one business support for over the course of a year which is yeah it's really great um but I think what helped me to get to that stage where I was successful in that application was um the incubator that I did and like the earlier initial like entrepreneurship competitions that I did as a team 
So that gradual process of building up confidence, being able to talk about your idea, be able to face the challenging questions, that's kind of led you up to those opportunities that or prepared you for those that have really given you that substantial support. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And um, I remember like earlier you said something about like recovering from the feedback. And um, I think that's really um, like it, it reminds me of like, like in the earlier stages when we were answering all those questions about the business and like it was it was stressful actually to be honest like I remember being with my team like um preparing for pitching and we're in um one of the common rooms with pizza just trying to work things out like trying to project like market finance projections about something that's just an idea and it was just like and getting feedback um yeah it, it can it like when it's like basically like your brainchild it can um be it it could definitely be draining and grueling trying to um work with like people's feedback and um like take it on the chin and not get too bogged down by like oh how is this actually going to work and um so yeah definitely having time to recover and um from uh feedback um so that you can take a step back before you come back to trying to improve it is definitely really key Yeah, and I think that that if you can, that's going to be part of your business probably as long as it exists, isn't it? Is it's always Mm -hmm. going to need feedback, and you're going to speak to kind of other stakeholders and get that. So that's that's really important. Um, All right. So having said that, then what have been your greatest successes and challenges in being a founder so far? Well, um, I I guess well, maybe I'll start with the challenges so I can end on a positive note yeah um, with that question so well the challenge initially I guess was um yeah turning it from an idea into something that's actually like identifying your unique selling point um was quite hard like and because like with entrepreneurship the whole point of it is that you're trying to create something new um you're trying to offer something um that like you see a need and you want to offer a solution to it and so what can be challenging is like actually imagining okay like where do I start though like because for me um I like I I'm quite good at like thinking of like the the finished picture as a perfectionist like oh Mm. this is what I'd hope for it to become and so I guess because I wanted Ramos to be like a one-stop shop that offers help for every single stage of the career process it it was really 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 hard to decide okay but what part are we getting started with and I'm still working on that now Mm. like um like whilst we're developing the app what kind of value can we offer to students in the meantime how can we validate this idea like um like with only like when we don't have the the infrastructure and the resources to do everything that we want to do like um, in the end like where do we begin basically is the question that was really hard um, mm. to pinpoint um, and that is something that I'm still trying to figure out um, but I think it's very much like an iterative process of like um, as long as you just make sure that you're doing something and you get over the hump of like perfectionism and you just try to put something out there and you get feedback and you acknowledge that it's not going to be what you want it to be like in in the end like but as long as you start with something then you're able to like I guess as a snowball effect like gradually um step by step get closer to the uh, to the finished product idea that you have and so like I'd say like that's definitely been the most challenging part because especially as like a platform when you want to offer so many different features like Mm -hmm. learning how to prioritize which features are most important right now and um what is most integral to like your value proposition and your selling point um to like yeah how do you um narrow down the different features and how do you decide on what's what to um like test out and validate and then um yeah so that's definitely challenging and now my my most recent challenges are trying to build up a team of people who Um, can also help me with taking action on these different points because it's also really important to delegate things so that you can focus on as a founder focus more on your strengths and focus on like the overarching strategy whilst you have other people helping you out with like areas that you're not as strong in and so that's been quite um, challenging trying to especially since we're all as a student-led organization I, I really value other students perspectives but since we are students and we have other priorities 
um, it's it can be hard to try and um, like do teamwork when we all have competing priorities and other things that we're involved with. Um, but then I guess the greatest success of um, for Vamos is well, definitely like with the Young Innovators Award. That really um, that was like a major win. Um, and being able to get um, financial support towards um, creating something. Because once again, as a student-led business, I'm not, like, I'm not, I don't have a full-time job. I can't, like, um, like invest much into it apart from my time. Mm. And so um, it really helps to get that support and, like, that recognition that, um, that I'm offering something that does offer value. Um, but then I guess another success, I'd say a su- um, their success in how we've responded to rejection as well and so I am like um not, like now looking back like I'm I'm really um I guess I feel like we've grown a lot through each rejection and like through making it through to the final round of this like entrepreneurship competition but then not getting selected like being able to like pivot and um like use that feedback and not just stop there but think of okay how can we adapt in response to it because it's very easy to, if you get rejected, like, um, to just think, okay, that just means that it's not good enough. When actually, you have to think of like, okay, why, why wasn't it? Um, and also like being more critical about the reason why it didn't work out. Because it may not necessarily be that the idea is not good. It could just mean that you're not a good fit with that particular opportunity, mm. or you're not what they're looking for as well. So I guess my success in that sense has been like with each with each different opportunity that I've pursued and been involved with learning and being critical, not just about the business itself, but about its fit and who would be relevant, um, who would be most helpful, what opportunity um, is a good fit for the business itself. Because I think for a lot of founders, we think that um, like just getting any money or recognition or reward from anywhere is like the goal, but it's actually also important to be strategic with and understand that, um not all opportunities are the same and not all of them um Mm. they all look for different types of people or organizations at different stages and different sectors so um a rejection from one place may may just be a matter of compatibility rather than the actual quality of the idea and I think that's so important that it's about it's just about fit rather than failure. And mm-hmm. actually, it's, I think, probably from what you've said, it's quite important is to depersonalize it as well. That it, I suppose because it's your idea, you're living with it 24 seven, you're trying to work on it. When you do get those rejections or things aren't quite right, I suppose you could take that quite personally, but you have to depersonalize it to ensure that you can be really critical about the business, but not yourself. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like that. I think that is what can get people really discouraged. Um, like when because you, when it's an idea that you have that you came, especially when it's something that was born out of your own experiences, <laughs> it's very easy to take things personally because it can yeah. feel like when when they're rejecting something, like they're rejecting um your struggles or they're rejecting the need for a solution. But actually, there are so there's so much more to um a no than just like um like like it's not I wouldn't even like necessarily say it as like failure in that sense because it's just I say it I, I kind of I remember thinking about learning um thinking that actually it's not really failure as much as it's feedback I guess the real failure is like um is in like not being open to um mm. critically um like understand the reasons why um it may not be a good fit for something so I guess the best success is just to um, like be humble and open to um, understanding why um, one opportunity um, closed that door um, and being open to like keep going and keep trying and um, like using that feedback to refine your business and also not just the business itself but refine your strategy for like who or what you um, apply to and reach out to. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. So what have you, obviously, you mentioned the pandemic a couple of times, but, and I suppose that's a, a maybe has it, it might have changed the way you're viewing your business or how it might be used. But so what have you learned in the last six months about your venture that you didn't know before? Um, I think, well, at the start of the pandemic, I first thought that, oh, um, 
I guess like oh there's not really much need for Vamos anymore because like um everything's just so everything's just like with the first lockdown it was like oh well everything shut down basically so I mean is there any even is there any point in continuing with this but then um like I guess what I've learned in the past six months is that um I've learned about how certain crises offer like new opportunities um to and that can actually I felt that the pandemic has actually made Vamos even more urgently needed um because now we've become even more dependent on online resources as students and employers we've become more dependent on online platforms mm. um than in person events um because like the insights that I got from my internship um and my own experience like at the civil service it was actually kind of by chance that I came across someone in who worked in human resources who told me about um what she did and that led me um to pursue HR um and uh, which I wouldn't have considered before which mm. but like opportunities like that you don't have that kind of like coincidental bumping into or having like a meeting set up with this person or that person on certain opportunities so like now more than ever like this pandemic has um provided has offered new problems and I guess if you think entrepreneurially that entrepreneurially that certain like the whole point of entrepreneurship is to provide solutions to problems then um like when like things like the pandemic are actually you can see it from a more positive light in an exciting way about um okay these are the like these are the new problems that are raised but now that also provides lots of opportunities for me to adapt and like um refine my value according to um what is like needed and so I guess what I've been learning with Vamos and I think what maybe helped me with my Young Innovators Award is um, the pandemic itself and how the government, um, how students have felt kind of hard done by in their career journeys and um, with like the government often focusing on like secondary schools and primary schools but not on um, the state of like careers for students at university like that has provided a new opening for Ramos to like really market itself as like okay we we want to put students first even if it students don't feel like others are um like keeping their best interests at heart and so um like I guess I, I've learned how to um like see the good in like crises and um a lot of funding opportunities have actually come out during this pandemic as well um in response to that um that have like that see the importance of like building community and um, mm. helping um, marginalized, like um, especially like um, ethnic minorities as well, who are really hard hit by the pandemic. So I guess um, it's really helpful to, um, yeah, like the pandemic has offered a lot of hope and like um, opportunity in ways that you might not think. Mm. Yeah. I think that's so important that you can <clears throat> immediately our reaction is like I think oh if things aren't going to work the way they used to it might not be needed and I think that's so important that you've recognized that those those consequences of bumping into people or learning from people have are not so much there so the ability to still be able to have those chats with people informally is so important but also how you can turn that crisis into that positivity like there's always been a need for that extra community there's always been a need to make opportunities more diverse but this has been an opportunity for you to be able to kind of take the positive from that so that's that's really great to hear um okay so you've been on quite a journey already and not even yet graduated um <laughs> But it sounds like you've learned an awful lot. So I would just like to close by asking you the question of obviously you've not graduated yet. So we'll go back to school and we'll say, you know, what would you say to the you when you were leaving school that you know now that you didn't know then in relation to your career planning? Mm, um, yeah, so like um, like when I finished sit form and like was preparing to start university, um, like I mentioned earlier how I had my mind fixed on the public sector and like um, international development careers um, and I didn't attend a single like non-public sector or co 
like event in my first year like I, I intentionally avoided all the different corporate events because I mm. I already decided like no that's not for me there's no point going I've got these essays to do and stuff instead but um like I guess like the advice that I would give to me then is that um actually like it's really really important to be open-minded and um like the university experience is like re a really unique part of life that is easy to take for granted the the whole point of university or the opportunities that it offers is that um it offers like lots of different ways to discover um and gain insight into lots of different areas like not just through like career events but also through extracurricular activities and um so I guess the advice I'd give to myself is to really maintain an open mind and um be willing to just try different things out and attend events um that you might not think are useful um because like like once you finish university you won't like it might be harder to get those insights or like because universities literally have like employers and career services offering all these events like right on your campus that are tailored for your needs and so um like the advice I'd give is just to really make the most out of that because that's like you're not just paying for an academic degree you're also um like the university experience is much more than just um, learning about um, social sciences or whatever you study. It's also about the different forms of support that's offered. So um, I guess maintain an open mind and like really make the most out of those different resources um, and support networks. I think that's great advice in terms of being open because you can have a, an, let's say for you, example, you said public sector, that can absolutely be your compass, you know, it can absolutely be your focus. But I think the key thing is you want that kind of joy and beauty of being open, don't you? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, part of being in university or even education is about freedom, I think, isn't it? It's about <laughs> the freedom to not want to pigeonhole yourself. Um, and, you know, even if you you know, have ideas like you say that don't work out. Well, hey, what's lost really, you know, mm -hmm. other than maybe a bit of time. Um, <laughs> so I think that's so important and great advice there to be to be open and to explore your kind of whole journey. All right. Any final advice you'd give to any other student listening who would love to start a has an idea and would like to get started with their venture, but feels a bit lost? What kind of last bit of advice would you give them? um well like I guess if they feel a bit lost with like where to start like there are lots of different um like entrepreneurship communities and um like resources that exist like um and books to check out so you can even just google like um you could honestly just google like oh how do I start a business <laughs> like you can like the internet is really really helpful in providing resources and um but then not just with the internet but also reaching out to your own personal network um of anyone who you think might be able to offer um to be a sounding board for your ideas um and it may not necessarily like, it doesn't have to be someone who's like a successful entrepreneur it can mm. be like the type of person that you want to help like getting insight from them like in understanding the problem I guess yeah so like if you split it up into like the problem and the solution like sure with getting help with like the solution you would want to um, talk to those who do have like business like knowledge and entrepreneurial experience but to understand the problem you can really um like that helps you to turn the idea into a business by talking to those that you'd want to help um and so really just having lots of those conversations because I went to like a bunch of different like events I went to like a um well a Camwib Cambridge Women and Business Society event um which was all about networking and talking to people and I just kept telling them about like when I met different people I'd tell them about my business idea that I'd have and it would be really helpful to and they like say oh that's really interesting and then they would like also think oh have you um checked out this like similar um resource or this similar um business and um and so people even people who aren't like investors or or something like just normal students and regular people like they all do have everyone has something to offer um you can and so yeah just like you probably do have someone in your network or multiple people in your network who can offer like really helpful advice and insight into both the problem and how to actually create a solution so definitely don't um undervalue um the people that you know that's great advice I think just asking anybody um there's also um like you say some some really useful 
um, events on at Cambridge. There's the societies, um, Judge Business School, the Career mm-hmm. Service have some pages just to get you started. But like you say, just talking to people, even if it's somebody that you feel that your your venture might help to get their to get their view on it. Um, is really important so thank you for sharing that all right well lovely to chat to you thank you so much for being so honest and sharing all of your advice I think you'll be a great inspiration to people and I wish you massive luck with your venture no thank you and thank you for inviting me to share my story as well No, you're welcome. I think there's nothing more valuable than hearing people's journeys. So we'll look out for the app in the future. All right. I shall say goodbye to you now. Thank you so much, Volu. Thank you.